Hello, and welcome to the My Old Car video log, where I document how I maintain, repair, and occasionally make upgrades to my 1974 Chevrolet Monte Carlo that's been my daily driver since 1984. With dedication and tenacity, you too can make your first car your forever car and drive it forever. Hi everyone. First off, let me say the noise you're hearing in the background is the dryer. It's drying clothes. That's what they do. So, what I'm going to do today is replace my master cylinder. It's exhibiting symptoms of leakage, and uh, so, you know, rather than try to fuck with it, I'm just gonna replace it. So, what you'll need in order to do that will be, of course, the new, a new or rebuilt master cylinder. And then, to remove it, you're gonna need a 916 socket and in my case, I'm also going to be using a 916 combination wrench. Now the 916 socket has a um, extension because on this side it can go all the way to can reach all the way to the nut. Or, yeah, the nut that's on this side. Um, this side, these things are in the way. I can't. It, it, it's, it's just going to laugh at me. I can't get get a good connect. You know, I can't get on there. So that's where this is going to come in to play. The other thing you're going to need to remove and replace these lines is a flared nut wrench. Uh, you'll be using the 916s. So yeah, there you go. Take those off, put them back on. And then before I even install this, I'm going to be bench bleeding it. So to do that, you're going to need, this is a specialty tool, you could call it that. It goes into these fittings here, the hoses go back into the reservoirs. And um, as you're bleeding, you'll be seeing bubbles coming out of here into the reservoir, and it just keeps on cycling through so you don't waste anything. Now to do that, once you have it in the vise, you're going to need to push this part down. I'm repurposing this push rod that goes into your valves, uh, rather your valve train. Uh, and so this fits in here nice. It's round, it's hardened, it's um, uh, very smooth, and in fact it's polished. So it goes in there nicely and it will work great to push this the cylinder in, or the piston in, in order to bleed the master cylinder. And of course, you're gonna want some DOT3 brake fluid. So let's see if we get started. So the shop manual says to remove the lines and then take this off. I'm actually going to um, go the other way. I'm gonna remove this first while the lines are still attached. And then I'm gonna check behind here to see just how bad the leakage is. So while scrounging around in my toolbox, I came across something I almost forgot I had. This is called a wobble extension. The purpose of it is to give you just enough wiggle or wobble to help with clearance. So looks like this should fit give me what I need. Let's hope it does that. Let's go ahead and give this the old college try. Ah, there it goes. <clears throat> now mind you, I'm not going to take this thing off entirely. I'm only going to, uh, loosen these nuts and then take off the hydraulic lines make sure that I put a uh, rag down here so when these hydraulic lines come off they aren't uh, I'm not going to be losing a whole bunch of hydraulic fluid all over the place Oh yeah, they're on there. Mm. 
one thing to note, I'm intentionally keeping the lid on because if this starts spewing out, the lid will act as a, um, as a tight seal and uh, prevent all of the fluid from spilling out. Yes, a little bit will come out, it's inevitable, but this will, you know, since it'll be forming a tight seal, it'll create a vacuum in here and it'll help to, mind you, and I emphasize, help to prevent all of the brake fluid from spewing out. There we go. All right, let's take the, let's take these other bolts off here and get this thing out. Let's get started on believing this. I'm gonna take out these plugs here. Now I'm gonna pop this open. Look, see, pretty. Okay, let's take these, put them in here. I'm only tightening this to where it feels like it's going to seat, or it feels like it's going to get overly tight. Because yeah, this is plastic. I'd like it to seat. Yeah, I don't want to go any further than that. Ooh, especially since it's distorting. Uh -huh. Yeah, we can't have that. Let's try this again, shall we? Ah, there we go. That works better. So this one goes into here, and this one goes into there. I'll bring this down to help keep these in place. Meanwhile, let's go up there. Help keep the bringing the uh, the snap spring retainer or down over these will help keep them in place. Now let's go ahead and fill these. Now I'm only going to fill them about halfway because once it sits in the car, it's going to be at an angle and I'm going to top them off anyway. Okay, now looking at these, what we're going to do is, look, reading the shop manual, it says to tilt this forward a little bit. So we're going to tilt this forward just a bit. And then we'll work this. All right, I'm going to use this socket in here to keep my hand in good shape as I press this down in here. Here we go. Now what you can do to help things along is tap it lightly with a, like a, uh, in my case I'm using a, a rawhide mallet. Use a plastic mallet. But something soft, you don't want to jar it. You certainly don't want to damage anything. And now we tilt it the other way. Looks like this side needs to be refilled it for sure. Let's go ahead and refill this out a little bit. And that one there. Now. A little longer than a few minutes later. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move that back off, back into off, all the way. 
see if this thing is defective. Just assembly fluid from assembly. Say this is not lead. So what I'm going to do is install this into the car with this stuff still in place and then afterwards remove these and then put on the um, hydraulic lines. I got a little trick to show you after that. Within eighth of an inch of the top. I'm going to start at a quarter inch. And maybe three eighths. There's a reason for that. You see, the most likely part after doing all this bleeding where air can get trapped is where these pieces where these um, where these lines bolt into the master cylinder now what they tell you in the shop manual is bleed the entire system you can do that but I have found uh, I guess the modern term is a simple hack to prevent having to spend all kinds of time going through bleeding the system using the soft mallet and tapping on like you know your calipers your master cylinder your proportioning valve and so on and so on and i'll show that to you in just a moment now here goes that hack i was telling you about this of course is only going to apply to the rear brakes i squeeze in the master or the, the wheel cylinder what this does is it forces fluid back through in you know uh, the entire brake line up into the master cylinder and when that happens any air that's trapped where the hydraulic line meets the master cylinder it's going to push it up into the master cylinder there you go that's the hack so much like the rear brake system in my little hack I used to put a back bleed um, the master cylinder where the hydraulic lines go up to it. This is how I back bleed the front compartment or the front chamber a reservoir for the master cylinder or the front brake system. Just like you're going to be changing out the um, 
the pads. Just simply squeeze this. And it sounds like we're making progress up here, huh? Oh yeah. So there you have it. There's my hack. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, please be sure to click the like button. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think it's time for a drive.